Watch out for the fresh, witty, fun-filled new breakfast talk show on Ben Television, Princess of Arise, a cutting-edge interactive show for people and businesses who want to arise and make a difference. You're welcome back. It's still Princess of Our Eyes, and our theme today, as I said, is Does Africa Truly Love Her Own People? And our second guest today is an amazing young lady. I just love to call her my baby sister. I admire her, and it's been a long time that I've been wanting to bring her on to the platform of Princess of Our Eyes. She is an, a fashion model, she's an actress, she is, what can I say? She's a makeup, international makeup artist. She does a TV presentation. She's a, a lifestyle specialist. She's everything that you'd like to see in somebody moving forward and going forward in 21st century of African descent. And there's also something very interesting about her, as I said when I was making the intros. She's half Gambian, half Nigerian, so I call her Niger Gambian. <laughs> and also married to a gentleman who also has dual parentage and she'll tell us a bit more about that the one and only for me the salute vote thank you so very much for having what? me what Say. an honor Say i haven't you. i haven't been introduced <laughs> like that ever so I, I i humbly ever so humbly accept thank you so much you're so welcome thank for me. you very much and for people maybe some people might have seen you a bit on you know facebook and instagram and yes. you know the social media but this is the First time they're actually seeing the real oh. Fumi herself. <laughs> and, um, you know, just the whole... And oh. I love the, you know... Oh, thank you. you. Thank you for doing that for me. The hair, you <laughs> I know... I stuff for you today. That is absolutely <laughs> lovely. You look so delightful indeed. Thank you very much. Now, for people, obviously, who are just, you know, yes. seeing you for the first time mm. ever, can we get to know a little bit more about Fumi Desalu Volt? You know your your family, your yes. background, your yes. you know education, career, yes. etc. Thank you very much. My uh, well, I suppose my my father was the commissioner for health, Lagos State. He was the commissioner for health for Lagos State, nineteen ninety five all the way to uh, sorry nineteen eighty five eighty five to uh, nineteen ninety two. Okay. I believe, okay. and I was very fortunate to have become the first uh, winner of the supermodel competition for Nigeria, and then it went on to West Africa. Okay. Immediately I left and we came to London, 1991, 92, and I studied at the American College in London, okay. and I studied business administration. Okay. That was my bachelor's. But throughout the time I always modeled, and I was always in fashion. I was always in that part of the industry. But of course, being such a young girl, I was only 20, 21 at that time. It was imperative that I had my education. education. <laughs> and that is the foundation, which I'm so grateful I have because it is the foundation for all of my businesses today. Oh, One, who, who, who would have thought mm. that this was the way it was going and to be? And the interfaces evolve. there. Now. And the interfaces there because the business end of it is what propels one to the other and it grows. So you have to have that business mind, you know. So I'm extremely grateful for that. Yes, my mother is Gambian. Wow. Yes, I love it so very much. And I, lo I love the twinkle in your eye when you say my mother is my Gambian. My mother is Gambian. I love her. I love her sensibilities. I love her personality. I love the, Niger the Nigerian. Mm -hmm. I think, I think she's not going to like it. I think I'm 60% Nigerian. <laughs> And 40% Gambian, Gambian, only because I grew up in Nigeria and we went for holidays in to Gambia. Gambia, you know. So I, I, I associate myself more as Nigerian. My name is Nigerian, yes. Olufumilayo, okay. Ade Tukumbo, Adeola, okay. De Salu. Okay. And when I got married, I was lucky enough to have a husband who honored 
our African side as well as his Norwegian and Scottish side. So he also took my name as I took his name. Oh, wow. And so our names are Desalu Vold. His last name was Vold. Mine was Desalu. And so I took that. Vold and he took Desalu. And that's how we that's became. That's amazing. We talk came, about we love. Became, <laughs> they talk about love. It took a while to show up, but he, he, you know, he, he was a good one. Oh. So. <laughs> Fantastic. And then yes. I do know that um, you had a stint in the famous TV series Ugly Betty oh, in America. Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> I did. I was modeling in America for 10 years. I was modeling in New York. And towards the end of my 30s, I was going into commercials and so on and so forth. And I actually did a music video for Puff Daddy, P. Diddy. Oh, the same yes, P. Diddy. The same P. Diddy. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. So much energy. And it was him that brought me to LA for for this show, so for his uh, for his music video, and I loved Los Angeles. I really did. And after September 11th, mm. that was a big awakening because I was I was hesitant. Should I leave New York? Should I go mm. to LA? Should I stay? And after September 11th, it just opened up my eyes that life is very short. That you if your if your regrets, if you have any, one of them should be that, oh, I wish I had. had, you should try everything. And so I went to Los Angeles as a model and as a uh, actress hoping to be a solid actress. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of extra work. Okay. A lot of actors do that. Yes. Up until I got my union memberships as a SAG, which is Screen Actors Guild, mm -hmm. and AFTRA, which is um, American Federation of Radio and Television Artists. And so I, was audi I auditioned for Ugly Betty. And I was so, so, so very stunned to have gotten <laughs> a <The> part, part. <laughs> you know, because it was the number one show in America I know, I remember. at that time. It yes. was everywhere. And it propelled my status a hundredfold because everybody saw it. So that's a huge platform. And I became friends with Vanessa Williams. We were beauty queens. She was Miss America. I was Miss Supermodel of Nigeria. Nigeria. So we bonded over that. And she was really good to me on that show. And it was interesting because as the show got cancelled, it was at the same time I'd met my husband. Oh, and that was how I Natural progression. It was a natural <laughs> progression. Sometimes when you don't even want to leave, you don't want to go, Life Something pulls will, will, you. Yes, it will pull you, tear you apart. So as it cancelled, I, you know, I, I got a husband. And so we relocated to Norway. And Norway was wonderful. I'm so proud of myself. I was able to learn the language. But I was always, my, my, my roots came with me. And that is one thing I have to say. I'm so grateful of being a Nigerian, being an African, because it's the one thing I noticed that Americans, black Americans, were losing. They didn't have, have the roots. Essence. So they didn't have the stance. Mm. I knew who I was, so I, so I was confident mm. in my own skin. And I was fortunate being in entertainment, being in television, being in fashion. Fashion has always followed me ever since I won the competition. I was able to continue my career in Norway. And so I did a film, Vagveam, there where I spoke Afrikaans, Norwegian, as well as English. I was the only actor that spoke wow. three languages. Absolutely. And so we've relocated to London because my husband has been transferred to the London okay. office. And again, continuing continue with my career, continuing with the fashion, with style. And because of the social media outlets, it has given me the platform to really show how many hats I do wear. Okay. Because I've been wearing makeup, I've been doing makeup for years. I learned from the best, from the fashion shows, from Fashion <laughs> Week, from the, from the makeup artists, from designers. So it's given me a platform where, you know, I do, I, I'm a Make professional makeup artist. Yes. I'm an actor as well. I'm definitely into fashion design. Hopefully one day I have my own uh, collection as well as my own cosmetics line, fragrance line, branch out, have my brand, but bring it all home. Because the platform that Nigeria gave me was to be an ambassador for that country. No and you're still, who you're I go, still wearing that yes, ambassadorial hat. So it's still in the crown. <laughs> Once I won that competition, it gave me that plateau. And so I give back in every way that I can, Good. anything and everything Nigerian and African. Fantastic. So yes. that's so beautiful to know the whole lot of you. So oh. people you now know, <laughs> be for me, this Thank you so much. She's no longer, we've, we've demystified it. <laughs> she's, she's no longer that 
face that you see on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram. You know, she's real. Or oh, thank she's you. She's not so a much. doll. She's actually real. You can <laughs> touch her, and thank she's you. there for real. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you very now, much. Now, next, I'm also going to ask you is um, coming from you know a mixed parentage background Go yourself. Ahead. And now married to a Norwegian, yes. who, who is also of mixed, mixed background. Yes. Um, how would you describe the state Africa is in right now? Ah, uh, that's a that's a very sensitive subject. So I'm going to do my very best. First and foremost, I think Nigeria has done so very well. I think they've done so very well from where we have come. Remember, we've only got our independence, 1960. That's not long. That's not long in comparison to 200 plus years that the United States have had. Agreed. So we've done very well but from could, where we have come we from. we have done and even we, better? You, here's the thing. I truly believe in constructive criticism. You pull and you encourage. I will not sit here and say, oh, you are, you are not getting anywhere. We're getting... One thing that we are doing is that we are transitioning. We are constantly moving, maybe not as fast as we expect because we have such high standards for ourselves. Nigeria is the capital of Africa. It starts with Nigeria. It's a lot of pressure on those shoulders. It's a huge country, 165 million plus, and we have to take all of them forward. And they will. We've started so many businesses and other African countries are seeing that. Can we do better? Absolutely, we can do better. Can we even go propel even the next 10 years so much more? Yes, we can. But I think, I think that for myself, as much as I want them to do better, I also have to go back and help them because a rope is not one string, mm -hmm. it's 20 strings. And I think that with enough muscle, unity, there's always strength, then we can propel faster. That's good. The reason why I, I um, wanted to ask you that question mm -hmm. is because we had a little chat, of obviously, course. before yes, we, we did. came in. Yes, we did. And, um, you know, we all have this kind of heart to yes. want to give back, to, Correct. to pull our Correct. people along with us. Yes. Unfortunately for me, sometimes yes. um, the leadership is so questionable. Yes. The ordinary person like you, like yes. me, we're trying our damnedest best, you know, our very best, to ensure that we just do our own little bit. You know, every Correct. little counts, as Correct. they say. We do our own little bit. But then sometimes you look and you're wondering, to what end? What, why mm. are we working this hard in mm. our own little way? Mm -hmm. And people who are in leadership, when I talk about leadership, I yes. always clarify, it's all, whether it's political leadership, yes. people in the faith sector who are yes. bishops, pastors and all that, and yes. mosques, and people who are also in the corporate world, the yes. top, top echelon of the co corporate world. Yes. What exactly are they doing? Do they not think about you know, the rest of, 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 of us? People get ill mm -hmm. in the high up. Mm -hmm. We have doctors, mm -hmm. brilliant doctors brilliant in Nigeria, doctors, yes. but they're on the, on the next plane yes. out of Nigeria seeking. Yes. I've never heard of um, David Cameron being flown out no. <laughs> for, for, you know, even the Queen. Correct. They're looked after here. Yes. Same thing with America. Obama's not been flown out of this no, country. not at all. So that is my dichotomy. That yes. what, what, what are the dynamics? Why are we that way? So it's ah. like a, quite a bunch of people are trying so much. Yes. In fact, a whole lot of people are, are trying, trying so, so much. Very much. And there are few that um, once they get to the leadership, it's like every sensibility goes out of the window. They even forget yes. where they're coming from. Yes. Yes. And the ingredients for that are two that I know of. Power and greed. Very lethal combination. <laughs> It's a very <laughs> lethal <laughs> It's worse than a snake bite. My goodness. Power and greed. The power and is greed. Lethal. Power and greed. You're in a position where you feel that let me take care of me as opposed to that position putting you in a place where you can help others. And so the, the race no longer becomes us 100. It becomes myself. I don't point my finger to any Anyone. one person, not at all, absolutely not. I only say that because we see. there has... We, we see. see. Yes, we, we see. see. We see. And it's a matter of the taking for themselves. And so they're in the power to do it. 
then that power and so they take and it's greed so not only they, do they take they take the whole, whole thing. thing that's what the i'm trying whole to say that. thing so not even a crumb not even <laughs> not even a crumb they wipe it out they wipe it out so we so we take one step forward and then we're two, two backwards even three backwards three maybe ten maybe ten so we have to think about decency we have to think about ethics principles honesty and say if we think of only ourselves as individual we will never, never make it anyone. we're a team we're a team i i say this to say i just finished watching the you know world cup it was amazing mm. it was amazing the germans won and they deserved it but they won because they, they were a team they never left any which one behind if they got to the goal they threw it over to the next person who had a greater possibility score. of scoring that's just the mental way i can look at it but then we have individuals who want to chase the ball from one end all the way by <laughs> themselves to take the glory for themselves because you have the endorsements yeah. you have the name that will be there yeah. you were the so that's that's what it is not only in nigeria in other countries third world countries that are lagging behind mm -hmm. you have where the very rich and you and have the very, very, very poor, poor. The in, where, there's nothing there's in between. nothing in between whereas the much more the western world isn't like that because somebody has stood up and said we're not going to take that. we're not going to take this because we will never be unified and if you're not unified you're weak and when you're weak, weak you're, vulnerable. you're vulnerable when you're vulnerable you're you're out you're out you're out thank you so much for sharing with that yes. so two more questions before you go yes i do know that you are very much involved in an upcoming african fashion week london absolutely um can you just not too much, just divulge a little bit yes, just, just to, to what our appetites. Yes. Okay, I'll tell you. It's about African fashion and African-inspired fashion of African designers as well as African designers here, giving them a platform to present their collection. It is going to be on the 8th and 9th of August. Please come. It's at the Olympia in Kensington at Hammersmith Road. Okay. And you cannot miss it because you see it everywhere. And if you need any details about tickets, please go to AfricaFashionWeekLondon.com. Very simple. Very simple. African Fashion. Or yes. they can just contact you or contact me. Absolutely. the emails are on the screen. Absolutely. And we'll Absolutely. point them in the right direction. Yes, please. Now, just before I let you go, because I know that you're <laughs> off to catch a plane soon. Yes, so please. Anyway, um, our theme, as you know, is, yes. you know, does Africa truly love her own people yes and i want you to just speak to even if it's just one young african out there yes and just speak from your heart from my heart to that person yes we love our people i believe africa does love its people but i believe that not so much that i believe i see when it's the olympics or when Africa is being represented in a global capacity. We say, oh, our people, our Africans, yes, this, up Nigeria, up this, up that. But within us, if it is side by side, we criticize. We feel that we have the right to openly express ourselves to our own fellow people. And like I said, I truly believe in constructive criticism because where does it end and where does it start? Where do, are we helpful? And if we don't unify ourselves and become one, like I have mentioned earlier, then we are weak and we are vulnerable. There's enough for all of us. There's enough for all of us. And we are good enough, in fact, more than good, to make that change. We should not be at the position that we are now. But we are not only fighting the war on the outside, but we are fighting the war within. And so the question is, why? Why? If you say I am your sister and I call you my brother, then why? That big question indeed. That's the big question. That is the question. So today is hashtag why. Why? We need to ask ourselves that. Why? And we need to ask each other that. Yes. Thank you so much for coming it's to share with pleasure. us. It's such a pleasure. Thank you I'm very sure much. I'm sure we'll be having you again <laughs> sometime soon. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, all the best with your trip. And all the best with you. Thank you Thank for you. having me. Thank you Absolutely. so much. God bless. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. We've been speaking with um, our second guest today, Mrs. Fumi de Salvolt. Um, as you know, she just comes in that total package that you see. Yeah, breath of fresh air. Somebody who, I call her my, another mini-me, I guess. <laughs> Who, you know, you have the same kind of mindset. Um, she's so direct 
about what she thinks, what she says, and she says it as it is. And um, with a lot of pluses, that's what I would say, you know, always on the positive side of things. And therefore, she says, if you want to be with us, 8th and 9th of August, come to the Olympia in Hammersmith, the African Fashion Week London. If you want any more details, contact her or contact myself and we'll point you to the right direction. All too soon, again, our time is up. I hope you've had a wonderful time with us today. And I just want to say a big, big thank you to our, our guests, both of them lovely ladies, Iman Kadi, and of course, for me, this Elvold. Not forgetting our dream team, to Tony and to Reza, who've been in the studios with us today, to everybody out there for watching, and most importantly, to God Almighty, who makes all things beautiful in his own time. Till same time, same place, continue to arise as agents of positive change. Just want to tell you that we're going on our seasonal break, as we always do every year, our annual seasonal break, but we'll be back in September. But between now and then, don't worry, Princess of Rise will still be on your screens. We'll bring you some nice ones that will be good repeats that you would love, and probably will bring you this one again as well. Take care of yourselves and each other. See ya. Watch out for the fresh, witty, fun-filled new breakfast talk show on Ben Television, Princess of Arise, a cutting-edge interactive show for people and businesses who want to arise and make a difference.